Hello team and welcome back. We're going over the latest line more patch notes. All this unit balance is live at this point. We're just gonna kind of go down the list, talk about the different things that have changed. If you have different opinions or things that I missed or predictions for where the meta goes, make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, we'll get right into it. Infantry, which is the coolest unit in line war, of course, got a speed bonus and a rifle damage increase. This is a huge buff for infantry just in general. It's the jack of all trades unit. Before the patch, we saw sometimes players were able to go for all their barracks and just build commandos out of them instead of infantry because of the strengths that commandos had. Now we'll probably see a shift to going for more infantry and commandos get, you know, reserved for their very specialized role. And if you're wondering, well, like in the next two lines, Duck, it's a buff for commandos. Their speed increased and their production cost also buffed two seconds less. The big thing about commandos, which are the coolest unit in line more, is the bottom most thing in this patch notes, which is base detection of solitary land units that are not tanks or structures are now enough to reveal point blank commandos, except if the commando is in a forest or mountain. So this is an enormous change for the commando. Uh, we will see like at this point, commandos won't be able to have as much of a, like be as effective in running around behind enemy lines and sniping buildings necessarily just because the single building now gives visibility so before if you heard commandos shooting at your buildings you'd have to visually check each one of your buildings to see which one is actually starting to take damage because the commandos might be invisible that will no longer be the case which will probably help out clear out those commandos if you send a single helicopter you can actually spot it single infantry single of anything as long as it's not a tank so huge nerf for the commando uh, and we'll you know next unit up is is the tank which is also a unit that got a very heavy nerf in this patch tanks of course being the coolest unit in line more firepower down for a 7.1 de percent decrease and 10 hp decrease tanks let's be real tanks were probably too good on ground they were the only real unit you would need to make on ground it would, it would make up the bulk of your army as long as you had the energy and the refineries that you could keep going to keep the tanks running this kind of just scales it back the tanks were rolling over everything other infantry artillery blobs they're certainly still very effective in soaking damage and being like little hit squads that can run around the map players have already found success with them post patch but just kind of tunes them back a little bit next unit is the mini tank the sam coolest unit in line war of course surface cannon range is decreased by 0.5 sams were able to kite infantry quite well a very good player was able to take a dot of sams and, and get so much value from them kiting infantry and kiting different units and now it's just sams won't be able to be as effective of a fighting unit in a blob and it kind of makes sense the sam surface there missile unit should it should be focused predominantly on clearing out you know enemy air instead of just fighting on the ground as effectively as it was so getting into the next group of changes of course with the the, the units that the sam is intended to kill the helicopters interceptors and strikers helicopters coolest unit in line war a little bit of a, a nerf on their speed from 1.4 to 1.3 helicopters are probably the highest skill ceiling air units in in my opinion the mobility of them the way they're able to land on any allied territory any any territory that you have conquered and captured yourself and a very good player how quickly they're able to get helicopters to different flanks and and move entire helicopter 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 swarms around the map this kind of just reduces that a little bit they're still extremely good we'll probably still see players go for airports that only build helicopters in their matches especially in in you know wide open land maps in general something that can sh also shut down the helicopters in addition to the sams interceptors up next interceptors got a, a fairly decent buff in this patch interceptors of course being the coolest unit in line more their anti-air cannon damage up to from 8 to 10 their hp from 135 to 150 and uh, importantly their taxiing speed was, was bumped by 0.4 so the interceptors now when you see enemy air the, the the speed at which you're going to be able to react to them and get your interceptors up in the air are, is much quicker right and the hp boost 
it's not really a temporary thing because we'll see but there's talk of one of the technologies that would be introduced in the game is interceptors getting flares to be able to soak up some damage from sams and other planes so the hp buff here may be kind of an interim thing of course that tech would be a, a long way off but maybe we'll see this rolled back if if that technology is introduced into the game and the aa cannon damage speaks for itself interceptor is just much better at at taking down other planes which is their you know big role in the in the video game uh hopefully i'm hoping that striker interceptor meta kind of develops i love the look of interceptor and strikers i think they've you know are very fun to play with uh and, but we'll see we'll see if this this buff is enough to bring interceptors back into the fold a little bit more strikers also got a pretty big buff here anti-air cannon damage from 8 to 10 their speed was buffed a little bit their anti-surface cannon damage was nerfed a tad bit the missile damage for anti-surface up from 17 to 20 and their anti-surface missile range 7 to 7.5 so the intent in general, what it sounds like of a striker is its ability to get in on target, deal a bunch of damage, and then get out of there. You generally want to send your strikers, get them to use all of their missiles, and then retreat them once they're starting to use their, their cannons because they're not doing nearly as much damage. So the anti-surface missile range is huge for this because they're going to be able to you know, shoot their target a little bit quicker than they usually would. Their speed is also a big deal in this, and in general, their missiles are doing more damage. So they, they pack more of a punch, they're quicker, they get there quicker, they launch their missiles quicker. We'll see how, how many people start using them. We probably won't see a return to just the striker blob meta, which we, we saw like a few months ago because of the strength of interceptors and also SAMs. I think players are, are generally getting a little bit better at, at building enough SAMs and spacing them out to deal with the strikers. But of course, it's all map dependent and very big buff for the striker in general. Next up is transport jet inter airbase transfer cargo capacity. No one cares about this. There's no way anyone cares about this. Very few people use the inter airbase transfer mechanic in the game. I always, I often forget it even exists. There's definitely places to use it because I'm, I'm kind of trolling it. Some people will use it, but in general, it's like if you're on a, on a map where you're going to start using inter airbase transfer, you probably either have naval control of something so you can use transport boats or just the kind of sim city you build, build your, your, your factories and barracks and such closer to the front lines and just have your units move there. But you know, it doubles from two things to four things. I believe this is also a tank counts as two. I don't even know. I've never really messed with this. I don't know how many tanks that a transport jet can transfer between airports. I don't know what it was before, if it was even possible. And now that it's four total cargo capacity, maybe tanks can go. But we'll see if anyone uses this, if it's if it's something people are interested in, if they find that this now makes it efficient enough to really be a, a bona fide mechanic in the game. The other big plane on the airport, the bomber, energy consumption up from 6.5 to 6.8. So this is a nerf to the bomber. It will use more energy. The big thing in balancing here is, I think in team games, sometimes folks will go for like all bombers. One of the players will go for all bombers. In 1v1s, it's you don't see it as much as a bomber opener. At least recently in the meta, we hadn't been seeing that just because of the prevalence of tanks. But in team games, this will just mean that the player who goes for bombers has to be a bit more careful on their energy. It's not a huge nerf or anything, but something to note, it happened. Next up is the destroyer and all the boats. Destroyer depth charge damage from 11 to 12. I personally like this because I dislike dealing with submarines. Destroyers are one of the best units to build against submarines. Probably the best unit uh, in the water because of their speed their, and their detection, of course, against the submarines, which have that stealth characteristic. So the depth charge, depth charge part of me does a little bit more damage. Hooray for the destroyer and destroyer lovers out there. Missile ship, HP goes from 150 to 140 pretty minor change missile ships are very good they're still very good it will continue to be very good and on certain maps having a dot of missile boats in the in a central body of water or 
you know, what whatever sort of situation. Missile boats, still very good. Great at taking down enemy planes. The DPS is huge. So not, not too much of a nerf for missile ships. But the next big thing in this patch, and this is probably one of the, the biggest changes that has happened. It's one of the biggest buffs that has happened to, to the entrenchment in a long time. Entrenched unit absolute range bonus is more than doubled from 0.3 to 0.7. The entrenched unit firepower bonus, 10% nerf from 20% to 10%. The armor bonus was buffed from 30% to 40%. And the entrenched unit vulnerable rear, rear arc, pardon me, goes from 90 degrees to 120 degrees. So if you can get behind your enemies entrenchments at this point you're gonna have a little bit easy like a more like easier of a time to clearing out those defensive lines now that it goes from a 90 degree arc that they lose all their armor bonus to a 120 degree arc but in general this is a very big buff for entrenchments the absolute range bonus alone is is a huge deal what one of the things that this lets that uh, this allows for is more units will be firing in the entrenchment at the enemy than they usually would because before if if a unit was right up against your entrenchment there's a chance that only say two of your infantry would be firing at that unit but now because of that extra range bonus it's probably going to be three of your infantry and that adds up over time it also means that artillery pieces that are behind the entrenchments or on um, that second line of defense they're going to be able to actually reach that first line we'll have to see it in action i think this majorly affects team games where entrenchments and that control of space becomes a little bit more of a big deal and and more importantly like this allows players who are in a 2v1 situation rather a 1v2 situation it allows them to dig in and buy a little bit more time for their teammates to come rescue them because before if you're in a 1v2 in a team game you're just dead immediately like really when it comes down to it in, in very few cases where folks able to survive so with this entrenchment bonus they might have a easier time can buy a few more minutes to let your team get there help you out turn the game around uh huge change we'll see how this affects 1v1 uh and in general enjoyment i'm interested to hear what people think about this and how they've been finding it in their games so far next up is a haste speed energy consumption change from 70 percent to 100 percent this just means whenever you're hasting your units, so that's like tanks, uh, bombers, like all planes and all boats, the energy consumption for them, uh, you're going to notice that there's 30% more to it. So you're just going to have to be more careful with your energy. I can't eyeball what this means or how many how many tanks you can comfortably run now on haste uh, because before it was like, what, five-ish tanks you could run on haste on one single refinery in general with a few breaks. So maybe it's like three or four now, but we'll see what this does. I like the change. It just means that you, you have to be more intentional as to when and how far you haste your energy units. The other major changes that have happened in this patch are around the rocket and the launch pad. The launch pad construction time goes down 24 seconds from 144 to 120. The rocket production time is is been been nerfed from 113 seconds to 137 seconds. So in general, you're going to be able to build that rocket in about the same amount of time. The rocket HP 40 nerf from from 270 to 230. But the most important thing about the rocket changes is that the rocket now takes 40 energy to launch as opposed to 20. And this is important because when you have one refinery or one power plant, you get 30 energy that you can possibly have. If that energy, if that refinery or power plant is full, then you'll have 30 out of 30. So this means that you have to build a depot and store some energy to get past that 30 out of 30, or you have to have two different energy sources. So you can have a refinery and a power plant, two power plants, two refineries, you know, exactly like that. So this is a big thing because power plant and energy, uh, like a refinery, both cost 260. So this is an, an additional investment that you have to make. A depot, I believe, costs 150, but it takes, I mean, I guess it takes just as much time as if you set up a new energy source. But either way, you have to build another building and be intentional about uh, how much energy you have before you launch your rocket. But it might, it might be a big change. Maybe this affects team games. 
a little bit more. I've seen folks in 1v1 also using more rockets lately since the patch has come out. So overall, a very big change. And if, you, if you're playing, just remember the next time you go launch a rocket, make sure you have 40 energy, not 20 for all the, the old timers out there. Yeah, the airstrip construction costs from 220 to 200. You can build more airstrips, I suppose. Just a little bit of a change there. And then we already talked about the bottom one, which is commandos losing some of their stealth if they're not in a forest or mountain. So that's all the changes. It's it's pretty substantial. Probably going to change the meta a little bit. I We've been casting some of the games. We'll continue to cast the games on the new patch so you can see for yourself how folks are finding it and what they're starting to build. The different builds that emerge out of this and the different meta play styles that people come up with. I think overall the feedback that I've heard so far is very positive for most players, especially in the team game dynamic with the entrenchments. Infantry, love it. I'm, I love building barracks and going mass infantry. So, you know, as long as infantry is getting buffed, I'm happy. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, what you'd like, what you don't like. And I for sure like left out a bunch of stuff unintentionally. There's a lot, there's a lot of different changes in how this will affect the game. So let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for all the support. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Just helps the channel grow. But of course, just thanks for watching the video. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the support. And have a wonderful night, day, evening, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever it is. We'll see you around. Peace.